the asteroid. All right, so another case where it's not a function. All right, so it doesn't pass the vertical line test, but we now know that implicit differentiation is a, is a good resource when it comes to things that are not functions. All right, so. Derivative, two-thirds x to the negative one-third plus two-thirds y to the negative one-third dy dx equals zero. All right. I can multiply everything by three halves, and that'll get rid of my coefficients. It's the beauty of having zero on the right-hand side. Again, we're looking for the equation of the tangent line. So it's at this point, just like the last question where you decide, do I wanna, do I wanna move things around, solve for dy dx first, or just plug in my numbers? I'm gonna plug in. When I plug in a one for y, that's just gonna cancel out the y part of it, so just dy dx. All right, eight to the negative one third power is the same as what? One half. Yeah, one over the cube root of eight. <coughs> and then subtract and you get dy dx equals negative one half. So the equation of my tangent line, I mean, we just did all the hard work. We are, they already gave us the coordinate. So y equals negative one half x minus eight plus one. All right. <laughs> Leading because there isn't always a set re ah. Good morning. Just like any other problem, it could be easier, difficult, depending on the nature of the function. So on the left-hand side, it looks like we have a product. So the product rule seems to make sense there. Product of two functions. All right, so my first function, x squared, multiplied by the derivative of the second function. So what would be the deriv derivative of y? dy dx. dy dx. Plus my second function in its original form, times the derivative of the first function, which would be what? 2x. All right, so again, we're taking derivatives involving x terms the way we always did. So y terms are getting that extra dy dx. All right, so what's the derivative of the right-hand side? Negative dy dx. All right, the one is constant, so that goes to zero. The negative y becomes a negative one, but because you're taking the derivative of a y term, you slap on the dy dx. All right, so now it's a matter of housekeeping. Now, if this were just asking for the first derivative, this is not that terrible of a problem. And also, because it says specifically to do it implicit, implicitly, we had to go down this pathway, but if it didn't, I would take a completely different approach because we could actually solve this fairly easily for y in terms of x. If that's the case, then implicit differentiation wouldn't be required. All right, but since we have to go down this pathway, we might as well see it to its conclusion. So I'm gonna add a dy dx to both sides. And I'll subtract off the 2xy, all right? So I'm gonna subtract that from both sides. So on the left-hand side, we have a common dy dx, and that happens fairly frequently. I mean, that's kind of the point. If you have multiple dy dx's, you wanna group them so that you can factor it out as a GCF. So I have dy dx as my common factor. What's left over once I pull that out? X squared plus one. 
All right, so my first derivative is gonna be dy dx equals negative two xy over x squared plus one. All right, so you know, some moving parts there, product rule, a little algebra to clean it up. But again, the question is asking us the <coughs> second derivative. So that means we have to do this again, this process again with this function, all right? The good news is it's not as you know, disorganized as the original problem was, all right? It is dy dx equals. So when I take the derivative of the left-hand side, it's going to become my second derivative, the derivative of the derivative. So we can go right to the appropriate notation for that, d2y dx squared. All right. So again, this is the second derivative of my function y per change in x per change in x. Now the right-hand side, that's where the fun begins. Quotient rule, yeah. So a quotient rule related to an expression that involves both x and y. Delightful. A little lag. All right, so denominator squared, get that out of the way at first. All right, we don't want to accidentally forget that. Low d high, so my low is x squared plus one. D high. Hmm. Well, the d high part, I'm just gonna sort of pull that off on the side here and rewrite it as negative two x times y. All right. Intuitively, we all understand that that's what it is, but I really want to accentuate that product to emphasize the idea that when we are taking the derivative of that, we have to be using the appropriate rule, in this case, the product rule. All right, so the first part of that, negative 2x, multiplied by the derivative of the second part, dy dx, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just a negative two. All right, we'll clean all that up in a minute, but the, the thing that's kind of jarring, probably more than anything, I mean, we're using quotient rule, yeah, and it's gonna get messy, definitely, but embedded within our quotient rule, we have a dy dx. So can I have a second derivative in terms of a derivative? That's kind of a strange thing, all right? But anyway, continuing on. Oh, hit the wrong button. I did my low d high. Now I have to do minus the high d low. What's the d low? 2x. 2x. All right, so that part wasn't bad. All right, so if the question did not ask us to simplify, we would only have one more move ahead of us, but because it does ask us to simplify, we have a few more moves ahead of us. Right. We can consolidate some things if we want. I'm not gonna go too crazy with that in this step. I have my negative two X multiplied by dy dx I'm gonna leave that blank for a sec. And then I'll consolidate my y and my negative two and make that a negative two y. <coughs> and also towards the end of the fraction, I have a negative two x y multiplied by a two x. So I have two negatives, so it'll become positive four x squared y. All over this stuff here. All right, so the big question would be, based on the fact that I left a, a gaping hole here, 
in place of the dy dx, the big question would be, well, what am I putting in there for the dy dx? Exactamundo. Hidden in plain sight. Negative 2xy over x squared plus 1. So I have to swap out dy dx. Well, what is that? Well, it's right here. dy dx is negative 2xy over x squared plus 1. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. What follows, eh, not so much. It's like uh, Avengers. It's like, what's the matter? You scared of a little lightning? It's like, no, I'm just not overly fond of what follows. That's the same idea here. I'm not, I'm not intimidated by just this transaction. That's not a problem. I'm just not overly fond of what comes after that. Let's just not do it. Let's just, yeah, let's just skip it. Just totally skip it. We know how to do it. <laughs> we, we totally know how to do it. Yeah, I mean, we never make mistakes <laughs> in, in basic algebra. Yeah, just totally do the dot 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 on the test, and yeah, it it'll all it'll all go well. Now, if it is a multiple choice question, you do have to match somehow match this up with the appropriate choice. Now, the big question would be, do I have to do that algebraically? The big answer would be absolutely not, because what you can do is choose some reasonable representative values for x and y, and when you do that it should clean this up and then correspondingly clean up your choices to the point where maybe you have equality. So, I mean, I don't know that I necessarily want to go plugging in a zero for everything, but maybe I'll plug in a one for X and a negative one for Y. Simplify, get a number. You know, it shouldn't be too crazy in this case. And then go to my choices. First, I'll, use, I'll do a little triage and see if I can eliminate anything that's ridiculous but then plug in the, the same values for one, uh, for X and Y that I do for this and see which ones bear out to give me the same result. Right? That, that's a strategy, but you may want to kind of meet in the middle where you say, let me simplify this a little bit to make it more convenient, but then once I do that, then I'll go to the distance. All right, in terms of plugging in X's and Y's. So let's do that. Let's take this. So I'm gonna multiply, this is an entire product here. If I multiply by x squared plus one, I'm just left with the negative two x and the negative two x y. So that's gonna give me a four x squared y. So I'm just gonna do a lot of flipping back and forth here. So four x squared y. For the second part, nothing's gonna cancel when I distributed to the negative 2y, it's, there's nothing canceling. So it's going to be negative 2y times x squared plus 1. And then plus a 4x squared y. Well, that, that's kind of nice. all over my x squared plus one squared. It, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Worth it to distribute? I'll, I'll take a look in a sec. Let me just. This is pretty, pretty instantaneous with the. Uh... <laughs> and then we'll combine also again. We'll have another combo step there. But uh, so it, it's not. A... Oh, yeah, because those two negatives go to positive, yeah. So 
we'll have a 6x squared y minus 2y. A little GCF action there. So I could pull out a 2y, and that'll give me what, a 3x squared minus 1? Eh. I mean, it's fine. It's nicer than it was previously in terms of an, an answer, but I, I like this, you know, that satisfying, nice cancellation. You know, you do all the work and the payoff is like, oh, look, now we have a common factor and it cancels out. My answer is just two. You know, that, that just, it feels nice when it happens. I, I like those moments, but alas, not the case here. It's the best we got. Um, <clears throat> a lot you can tell from this. If I needed to determine a vertical tangent or a horizontal tangent, I can use this. Uh, um, actually, well, this is a second derivative, so uh, not, not quite going to play out the same way. But it's in, a, it's in a reasonable form, so if I needed to find inflection points or things like that, then, yeah. uh, then I could work with it. More so, I think, than the unsimplified form. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool stuff, I think. Uh, second derivative of e to the xy plus 3y minus 5x equals 2. That, that's, that's a crispy fried one. I think as a student, that's got to be a cool moment. Where it's like, yeah, I, I understand stuff that adults don't. Relatively. <laughs> uh, second derivative of this. Okay, so again, the first derivative is not too bad in most cases. The second derivative is where you're going to earn your keep. All right, so the fun part of this one is the e component. So I have e to the x, y. So I have a product within my exponent. That's exciting. So my derivative would be e to the x, y multiplied by the derivative of my exponent. First times the derivative of the second, because again, it's a product of two, two jammies there. First times the derivative of the second. So that's a dy, dx. plus the second times the derivative of the first. It only happened to me once in my life where I was. What would you think if they were there? I'd be like, hey, how are you? <laughs> you heard everything I just said, didn't you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm pretty open and honest when it comes out. So. You're like, I um, just made a fool out of myself, didn't I? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Been like, but you don't understand. <laughs> everything I said was true. <laughs> However, I, if I could have changed one thing, I would have ensured that you were out of your shot. <laughs> so, plus three, uh, three dy dx. Minus five equals zero. All right, so, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good way. So it's, it's a mess, but again, if our goal is to just isolate the dy dx, you, you, you have a recipe. I mean, it's like, I know what I have to do, I just have to go ahead and do it. It looks like I have to distribute my e to the xy. So I'll write it as x dy dx e to the xy plus 
y e to the x y plus three dy dx minus five equals zero. All right, again, isolating dy dx. That's the name of the game. So the first term and the third term need to stay. Everything else needs to go. All right, so rewrite x dy dx e to the xy plus three dy dx equals, I'll write it as five minus y e to the xy. Common dy dx, pull it out, and then divide by the, the factor. I'll show the step though. So I get a first derivative, dy dx, a very lovely looking first derivative of 5 minus y e to the xy over x e to the xy plus 3. So that's our first derivative. So now we need the second derivative which involves quotient rule and product rule. And then within the product rule is more product rule. So it's a product of a product. So obviously my favorite question ever. Um, and in fact, just so I don't have to scroll back and forth, I'm gonna write it up on the board here. All right. So, let me get it in a little bit bigger. Second derivative. All right. Low d high. So the d high part, all right. Well, the five goes away. That's exciting. I need the product rule associated with, so if I'm looking at five minus y e to the x y, I would look at the negative y as a factor and e to the x y as another factor. All right. So. Because again, the 5 goes away. So the first function, negative y, times the derivative of the second function, e to the xy becomes e to the xy multiplied by x dy dx plus y. All right, that's product rule for the xy, but it's also something that we did in the first part. So asked and answered, basically. How does the, um, the first thing get there? Oh, that's the low. So low d high. Oh, I and then now we're going to do minus the high. Oh, I almost fell. D low. All right, well, the three's gonna go away. All right, it's not bad. So X is my first function. First times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the second function would be E to the XY times X dy dx plus Y. All right, so 
That was first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which the derivative of the first, the x is just a one. And that's all over the denominator squared. So let me just bring this in a little bit. Okay, now we have to clean it up. We have d, uh, dy dx here and here. So those have to get swapped out, but in the process, it, it makes sense to, to do a little housekeeping while we're at it, just to trim this down a little bit in the hopes that maybe, maybe we'll have something way simpler rather than just simply simpler. All right, so we're distributing this to each term. Hmm. Yeah, it's the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second. So first function as is. We didn't take the derivative of this, so that's where this came from. And then all of this is the derivative of the second. Oh, I missed that part? Oh, thank you. Wait, there's more? Oh, there's more. e to the x oh. y times negative dy dx. Yeah. All right. So negative x y e to the xy dy dx minus y squared e to the xy. So that's that distribution going on. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, the rest is not going to be grouped. So, Plus, oh, so this would be minus, actually. e to the xy dy dx Distributive property. See, I really like this kind of question because it gives me a good sense of the quality of students that I have. Like the kind that are like, oh, this is too hard. I'm just going to stop. That's cool. But then it really tells me that you're just here for like the grade and you don't care about learning. It's disappointing, but whatever. Um, it's okay, I'll still bring the chili though. But I won't make it as delicious. It will only be satisfactory. See, that, that's the kind of question. 
That's the one that's like, oh, if, if, if I, I'm only going to worry about uh, it if it's like, going to be on a test. No, I, I just like, I don't <laughs> want to have to. I mean, come on, man. It's a question that's taking us like 25 and a half minutes. What do you would, think? <laughs> would you suggest having more room for this in your next year's packet? No, ah. no, because I, I figure there, there are going to be questions that take up a lot of space. I figure I spotted you the first hundred pages of notes. So the least you could do is throw in a few... Um, Piece of the loose leaf. Yeah, that, that's what I was just saying. Oh, so no. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd have to give you like ten pages of package for this. Like, use your own loose leaf sometimes. So anyway, that's like I said. I figured I spotted you for a hundred pages. So at least you could do a couple of sheets of loose leaf. Um, so anyway. All right, so just looking for any possible errors, but it's kind of hard not to be like, whoa, and just continue on hoping for the best. So it looks like we're ready to just swap out our dy dx's. All right, so dy dx would get replaced with this monster here. No. And. <laughs> no. Yes. Don't Yeah, I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. So, with just a, a little bit of reasoning, though, it's important to actually stop, kind of take stock of the situation, and see where things are going to go. All right. Because here, when I distribute this, there are two dy dx terms in there, right? Yeah. Each one of those dy dx terms has a denominator uh, that is the same as the multiplier. So at least for these two terms, this is going to cancel out with that denominator. So when I go to rewrite it, it's going to make things a little easier. Um, this is like a hypothetical question. We're past it now. But like, if you go the step before, since it doesn't say you have to simplify, could you just put in the derivative then and like stop there. And call it a day. Yeah. Correct. Totally. Yeah. All right. So when I distribute this to each term, I, I don't know in terms of notation how I would write this. I'm not going to like come up with a symbol that represents just the denominator of a derivative. You know, you just have to kind of know it. That this is going to cancel out with that denominator, leaving only the numerator as the multiplier here. So negative x, y, e to the x, y, times just the top of my derivative, which is 5 minus y, e to the x, y. The second part, you're, you're stuck with the, the entire expression because well, actually, it, the, the derivative doesn't factor in. You're, you're going to have to actually just multiply this by that. So it is what it is. You just have to do it. So minus y squared e to the xy multiplied by x e to the xy plus 3 minus e to the xy multiplied only by the top of the derivative. All right, now the next part, that one I think you, you just have to rewrite it, replacing the dy dx with its derivative. I don't think any purpose is served by actually distributing through the 5 minus y e to the xy, or at least no obvious purpose.
and then all of that is going to be over the x squared I'm oh, sorry, the uh, XE squared. So that would be our second derivative. Can you simplify it? Well, yeah. Is it worth it to simplify it? I don't know. There's no context. But, you know, I start looking for common factors. Like, for example, across the board, it looks like there's definitely a common e to the x, y. I could pull out of the whole thing. Uh, in terms of binomials, I don't think there's anything. This one kind of screws everything up. You know, we have a 5 minus y, e to the x, y everywhere else except for here. Thank you very much. Um, if we add a common, and this is a, a, a classic maneuver. That, that you're gonna make use of before all is said and done. But if you have a binomial in the bottom of a fraction, you wanna be looking for that binomial across the top of your fraction because then you could possibly cancel it out and then simplify the top uh, just kind of naturally. Although, you, you know, you look at something like this and you say, well, I could get a common denominator. There's a lot of things you could do. It's just a question of whether it's worth it to do it. All right, so what I would do if this were a multiple choice question, this is what I was talking about before, is I would strategically select values of X and Y and then match it up with the appropriate choice. Now, it may not get you to a point where you can lock in on a, on a single choice, but you can get it down to like one or two choices and then just go from there. But anything that would make my exponent equal to zero is gonna be worth looking into because that would cancel out all my E's. All right, so if x is zero or y is zero, you could let x equal whatever you want with y being equal to zero, or the other way around, and then apply the same changes to your choices and see which one matches up numerically. All right, and it, it's kind of weird, but that is kind of the expectation when they develop some of these questions, is that you get to something like this, and then you spend way too much time trying to work this algebraically when you should shift gears and try something else, all right? Because what they want you to do is they want you to get tunnel vision locked on to a particular problem, spend way too much time on that, and then not have enough time to finish other questions, oh, all right? That, that, I mean, that's college board. That's what the SATs, uh, AP exams, that's, that's kind of their MO. They want you to kind of fall into that trap, get stuck on a problem, and then stay there not realizing, you know what? Just put this one aside and move on, or do something like this, plug in a number for x and y and see where it goes. Just a small question. I see there's a parentheses on the left side. That I never closed? Yeah. I honestly, I don't even know that I needed to open them. When I, when I made them, I, I was kind of looking at it weirdly in my mind. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be there anyway which is a whole lot easier than trying to figure out where I should close it.